Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on the tropics. In this video, we're going to be talking about our two tropical cyclones, Kate and Ida. And yesterday, Ida was a catastrophic hurricane that made landfall in Louisiana. And then we have these two disturbances. So an airflow pressure expected to form in the Caribbean. And we have that new disturbance off Africa that might even become a name storm probably by the midweek. And so before I go into details... <laughs> Okay guys, and so first up, also please subscribe to my nature channel which I recently launched which is called The Nature. So that channel will really be focused on natural phenomena taking place on and around Earth and I just really look forward to bringing you more information about these various phenomena and really just sharing my knowledge so that you can be more aware of what's happening out there. And so now let's go on. So we're going to be kickstarting with Kate. So looking at the satellite imagery of the cyclone, we're seeing here that Kate is a very disorganized uh, system it is very poorly organized right now and uh, we see a bit of circulation but there is a very limited shower and thunderstorm activity so it is in a region that is not so favorable right now but as time goes by we are expecting that Kate will be strengthening and so looking at the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center we see that Kate has winds of 45 miles per hour and it is accelerating northward at 8 miles per hour so as it accelerates to the north and make that northwestward track and go further up north conditions are expected to be a bit more favorable to result in a bit of strengthening of the tropical cyclone and so kate could have sustained winds at maximum being at around 65 miles per hour or so so fortunately as of right now it is not going to be a threat to land and so now let's move on to tropical storm ida so ida is a weakening tropical cyclone yesterday it was one of the strongest to make landfall in the u.s and louisiana and there was absolutely chaos over there especially in areas that were in the direct path of it such as Grand Isle so the surge was devastating there and so now fortunately here we have a rapidly weakening tropical cyclone as you can see on satellite here so Ida is not looking very very organized it's starting to get somewhat asymmetrical and uh, by the next few days we're expecting that it is going to become post-tropical so now let's go on to the national hurricane center's cone forecast for the tropical cyclone and so we're seeing here that Ida is accelerating to the north northeast at 9 miles per hour and it has sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. So it is not expected to be a tropical cyclone for a very long time uh, from now on. So it is going to be bringing that rainfall, however, into sections of the U.S. So it is going to be passing through northwestern Alabama, going through Tennessee, uh, the Virginias, and even going up to the east coast and moving back out into the Atlantic. So it is going to become post-tropical by the midweek and fortunately impacts are not expected to be too significant when Ida is going to be making its way through and so looking at the rainfall potential map here we have the different colors here mean different amounts of anticipated rainfall so we have the light green meaning one inch the darker green two the yellow four and the orange six so let's stop right there so some areas especially as we head up to the northeast are expected to receive quite a bit of rainfall but mainly about four inches uh two inches between two and four inches that is going to be the maximum amount for most of the areas but some areas could experience more rainfall than that but fortunately as we're going to be heading into the latter part of this week Ida is going to be making its way out of the US and so guys now let's move on to our two disturbances in the Atlantic Basin so first up we have that disturbance just off Africa that will be designated as an invest very soon so as of right now as you're seeing it is given a very high 90% chance to develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days and it has a high 70 percent chance through the next 48 hours so as of right now it is expected to mainly move on a west northwestward like track and so it is possible that this system here is not going to be making its way straight into the caribbean but it is uh, likely to make a northward turn but again we have to wait and see what is going to be the outcome in terms of the system but as of right now if you're in the cabo verde islands you might experience some inclement weather from this when the system is going to be making its way westward so let's look at it on satellite 
So we're seeing here that it is quite disorganized. We don't have much going on because obviously it's just coming off Africa. So it is just emerging into that conducive environment that is going to be helping to get the system in shape and eventually allows it to become a depression and probably a storm. And who knows if it could even become a hurricane. But let's just hope that this thing here won't be much of a threat to land. It. And so now let's move on to the other highlighted area for potential development. So this is located in the Caribbean and as you're seeing, there is a 20% chance of development during the next five days. So we're expecting that a low pressure system is going to be developing in the South Caribbean here. So that is why you don't see that X yet because that is what usually shows the location of that low pressure system. So when it does form, however, you will see it. And so it's it seems as though this is going to be a threat to portions of Central America whenever it does develop, especially if it is going to be mainly over in the warm ocean waters of the Caribbean. So we really have to wait and see what the eventual outcome is going to be for this and things are definitely likely to change as time goes by. So we could have some development taking place here maybe by the latter part of this week or sometime in the early part of the new week. And so let's take a look at conditions that are currently persisting across the Atlantic Basin. So first up is the ocean temperature map and so we're seeing here that ocean temperatures are very warm especially in the Gulf of Mexico and this is the reason we had Ida rapidly intensifying into a major cat 4 being so close to cat 5 intensity so the ocean temperatures in the Gulf are very conducive the shear was conducive as well and there was not any lingering dry air that was really affecting the system much so with all of those favorable conditions that were in place that's the reason we had Ida rapidly intensifying into such a catastrophic cyclone so taking a look at the rest of the basin the Caribbean is very warm and out in the main development region is also warm but as we head more westward we see that it gets warmer so if we're going to be having that disturbance of Africa making its way continually westward then it is going to be remaining in favorable in favorable conditions and eventually developing and intensifying as time goes by and so now let's move on to the wind shear map and so the different colors here mean different shear intensities so we have the green meaning favorable shear the yellow means neutral and the red means unfavorable so we see that we have quite a bit of unfavorable shear setting across most of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico as well it's really the western portion of the Gulf that is uh, that has conducive shear right now and so looking in the vicinity of Cades it is not in a very favorable region hence the system is looking so disorganized as we saw earlier on satellites because conditions are not entirely favorable for the system here but again as it accelerates northward it is going to be getting in shape better and intensifying and so finally let's go on to the saharan dust so we have some saharan dust across portions of the north caribbean and we have some spots of dense dense dust that are out there especially just off the coast of africa as we go north of that uh, new disturbance off the coast so nothing much really extended across most of the basin so this is going to be aiding in the development of our new disturbance with a high chance to develop into a tropical cyclone so again if you're in the Cabo Verde islands you might experience a bit of increase weather as a result of the disturbance making its way by and uh, let's hope that this thing here is not going to be much of a threat to land after that so we have to wait and see what the eventual outcome is going to be but of course as usual i will keep you updated on the latest in the tropics and so guys that is it for this video and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be weather wise